today is going to be a wonderful modern halacha, and I hope no michshol comes out of this. But you know, Darka Hashem Yisharim, Sadikim, Yelchubam, Rishayim, Yekashlubam. But um, we were talking about the thirty-nine labors. One of the thirty-nine things, a subcategory. Obviously, on Shabbat, we're not allowed to do any construction. A told of that malacha is to um, go ahead and um, pitch a tent, right? So if somebody happens to be Shabbat camping, you better put your pitch your tent before Shabbat. It's a biblically synonymous to t lighting fire on Shabbos, Shabbat to make a tent. As is very clear, for 40 years there was there weren't been the Jews when they lived in the desert, Sinai Desert for 40 years, they weren't building any Empire State buildings, right? They lived a nomadic lifestyle, which was all what? Tents. Now, what is the halachic halacha Moshe Misina? What does the oral Torah define as a tent? So it's a um, like we see over here in this um, picture I had. The um, right Costco, it's that season, right? Everybody's gonna be you, you put a roof, roof on, and basically, what it is is um, anytime you put a canopy, right? Right, the, the most classical uh, oh hell is a sukkah, right? We're not allowed to build a sukkah on Shabbat, right? So, any doesn't matter if the material is organic or plastic or whatever it doesn't matter what the material is right it could be leather mm -hmm. and you have uh, some living space under it right so you put a parchment doesn't matter leather plastic leaves like in a sukkah because mm -hmm. you want to get shelter from the sun and rain but obviously just like if a sukkah the the canopy that you're putting has more uh, sunlight and shade, it's really not doing anything. It's not going to be usher from Torah law for sure, right? Mm -hmm. It has to be a legitimate, like Actually, we yeah. said, right? And let me let me rephrase that. And on Shabbat to be, it's a very high parameter and to be liable from Torah law on a lot of these labors, 39 malachot. It has to be like legitimate, serious, you know, work. Not just a Mickey Mouse job, right? So obviously... <laughs> Now, there is a fundamental difference between a temporary tent and a permanent tent. The permanent tent usually, what's the bare minimum shear? Because, you know, all laws of Shabbat also, there's another barometer for you to, you know, if somebody does it on purpose and witnesses warn him, he gets the death penalty. If not, he has to bring a shogeg, right? He has to bring a offering. Like, that's the whole Sefer Vayikra for you for the next few parshas, right? We had last week's Parsha Ola, Parsha's Tzav, and now Shmini. So at least, as long as if the canopy is three and a half inches by three and a half inches, some of the tefach is four inches, doesn't matter, right? As long as this um, canopy you're making, right, is... Um, one tefach by one tefach, which some old is three and a half inches by three and a half inches. Imagine a person like opens one of these mini umbrella hats. I don't know if you've seen that. You look like a clown, but <laughs> like as long, as long as it's um, its circumference is three and a half by three and a half inches, or if you want to be machra like the Chazayin, some hold around between more closer to four inches. You've done labor on Shabbat. You've created a tent, yeah. an ohel. But, you know, obviously, if it's a Mickey Mouse job, it's only there for, um, it doesn't even have three and a half inches by three and a half inches, or it's just so temporary in nature. Now, what, what, how temporary is temporary? So he brings a very interesting thing here. He says the Mishnah Brewer holds eight days. So as long as if your tent is not going to be up for it more than less, than less than eight days, it's considered temporary. And most posts can hold that such a tent is the Rabbanan, as we're going to see in Rabbavadi's Tshuva. The, but the Menuch HaSava, which was a great, great Gaon, Sephardic Gaon from um, 
Torah genius from from um, from Bnei Brak, he he has another understanding of the malacha. He says, as long as this tent that you br- build could last forever indefinitely, it doesn't matter when you want to bring it down. It's not like the shoelaces. Remember, yeah, it's already aser midaraisa. Oh hell, right. Oh hell, keba means something that is made for you to remain permanent. No, oh hell, exactly. Oh hell, aride by definition is something that's made like an umbrella is the oh hell aride because it's made to open and close. But something that when you put it in, <coughs> even if after a few hours you're going to close it, according to the menu harava, you've already done a Isr Torah. You understand? Now, getting to the million dollar question, since this year in California, it's very raining and cold. Every Shabbos, like my brother was just saying, every Shabbat. It seems that Hashem is sending us a beautiful gift of rain. I guess it's the extra month that we're saying Mashi Baruch Hamidah We had two Adars, so Hashem wants to give us double blessing in our lives. But historically speaking, we haven't had so much rain in California in March and February for I think the last hundred years. It's one of the top few rainiest months. Question is, let's say you don't want to get wet, you don't enjoy getting wet. I mean, I hate to say this as a shul rabbi, some people. Don't come to shul. Don't worry, you won't melt in the rain, like the Wizard of Oz. But uh-huh. it's scary. I mean, uh, heavy rain to Californians is like snow to East Coasters. But it, the question is: is allow is one allowed to use an umbrella on Shabbos? So Rav Avadia deals with this in his wonderful work, um, Volume Two, um, Chapter Forty Three. In Yechavadat. And Rav Ovadia brings a fascinating tshuva, which is so amazing and refreshing. We know the Talmud Bavli in page Kuf Lamed Zayin, Amud Bet, says that even clearly from Talmudical law, it is forbidden, like we just said, to make a temp, even a temporary tent, right? Roof. Now, there's a fundamental machlekis, the Alfasi, the Rif, and the Rambam, what the nature of this temporary Ohel tent is. The Rif holds its Asr from Torah law. The Rambam holds its only rabbinic in nature. But the great Italian posik that was a, just unfathomable how great of a Talmud Chacham he was, oh. Rabbi David Pardo, which wrote Shalot to Teshuvot. A lot of people don't know him, unfortunately, because we grew up in Ashkenazi yeshivas, but he's a great Svardi Achon. People don't li- realize, besides the Arachayim and the Ramchal, we had some really, really, really great Gaonim. In the, amongst the Achronim? Svardi Achronim. So one of, the, one of our stars is Rabbi David Pardo. Shalot Teshuvot Mechtam Le David. He's the earliest source Rav Avadia brings. He already writes from a few hundred years ago that it's, of course, it's all for... Now, there's two problems, by the way. If you don't understand this, you have no common sense. We said in the Mishra Hashem, you're a dead fish, but <laughs> like a fish outside the water. But everything we're talking about, um, we just, uh, you know, my brother says common sense isn't too common anymore, so we're going to spell it out here black and white. Everything that we talk about vis-a-vis this umbrella is considering is under the consideration that there's an Eruf, right? A prominent halachic based in, like Rabbi Moshe Heinemann is very big, and um, over here we have, in L.A., we have to thank um, Howard Witkin to the, that he's, um, he's not the rabbinical authority, posik of the Eruf, but He's um, he's um, he 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 um, he he's in charge of the a roof. Now, obviously, if you don't have an a roof, right, gentlemen, if you don't have an a roof, then you have a second problem, right? So, Rav David Pardo says, opening the umbrella on Shabbos, you open up a can of worms, right? Basically speaking, open up. Uh, umbrella is a problem of Ohel. Now, most people don't leave their umbrellas open for eight days, like the Mishnah Baruch says. So it's an Ohel Arai. It's a temporarily Ohel. So 
according to the Rif, it'll be a Isra Torah. According to the Ramam, it's only Asa Midur But it's a different, it's definitely Isra Torah to carry the umbrella, Isra Torah, if you don't have an Eruv, right? So again, common sense is to come, and I just want to make that crystal clear. Because some people, they supposedly are Shomer Shabbat, but they decided that this part of the Torah, they want to, this part of their Sefer Torah, they wanted to cut out figuratively and throw it in the garbage, Rachman al So, the, so already the Italian post came almost, I think it was two, three hundred years ago, right? He, he says that even perhaps the Rambam may hold its Asur Torah. He's not sure. But that's why the Rambam writes that if you, there was these, uh, like, it, you should know, it's also a problem wearing the hats, the Mexican hats, the cowboy hats that have a very long brim. Long brim. Because, oh, that's part of that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, again, I can't... These laws of Shabbat, we could literally record a hundred hours of shiurim on it. Hundreds upon hundreds of hours. We're just... I'm it trying to... principles. Yeah, I'm trying to... And also, yeah, for sure. Any malacha we did, I could give another ten classes on it most of the time. The Gemara Chagiya says you're dealing with mountains upon mountains of information, but we just want to hit the tip of the iceberg that you should... You know, be aware this is a malach, and now you could ask, right? I'm not coming to here to give you hundred hours of information in, in, in this half an hour share, right? Yeah. Right, because also we do modern halacha. We bring the different post game. We're developing a tshuva. Right. We go to the Talmudic sources, but anyways, the Shulchan Aruch clearly says it's a problem. Oh Arai. Now that's uh, above the the pay grade of the shear where Mother Maran Paskins like the Rambam. Or the Rif, it's Asr Minatayra, but the Shulchan Aruch in chapter 30, uh, 301, Hilchot Shabbat, Se'i 40, subcategory 40, clearly says, so Rav Avadia Yosef says clearly, according to the Shulchan Aruch, it's open. Everybody will agree that it's forbidden to open, right? That's a unanimously forbidden. forbidden. To open the thing, the umbrella, right? On Shabbat is for sure at least Asr Midrabana. Right? According to the Rif, already you're dealing with Issa Daraisa, which is really scary. The Lord, Now, you have a tremendous night of Yehuda. Unfortunately, when umbrellas first came out in Europe, the masses, unfortunately, you know, it, it really makes me cry. But, you know, in the end of the day, many, many, many holy and precious Jews had to put food on the table. And, you know, they don't have time to learn Torah because we Jews have suffered so much in this terrible, bitter gullus that we need Mashiach now this second for millions of different reasons. And the, one of the least one being that the study of Torah by 99% of the Jews, probably 99% of Jewry isn't studying at least 1% of the amount of the Torah they're studying. So the, the Noida Yehuda, and I need to write, this Noida Yehuda is a hallmark teshuva. The Noida Yehuda is in Mahadura Tanina, his second volume, or Achayim 30. He says that, the Night of Yudah clearly says it's forbidden to open up an umbrella on Shabbat. The, the question is if it's open before Shabbat. So, right? Again, nobody in the world will say you're allowed to open the umbrella on Shabbat because you're making at least a temporary oil. Right? But the, the problem was that in Europe, People were smart, Alex. They said, let's open it before Shabbat. They didn't want to get wet, right? And um, people started using it. So the Noda Yehuda is very against it. He says, you know, I, I believe that it's usher from, from rabbinical law. And even if you want to say, since it's made to open and close, maybe perhaps it's, it isn't an Ola Arai, but there's Marat Ayin, right? No. Nobody is going to know you were such a wise guy to open it before Shabbat. And he says, unfortunately, many people started carrying it because they had an Eruv. So you see from here also something very important. That with all due respect to Rabbi Moshe Feinstein, he was against the Eruv in New York. Rabbi Chaim Oizer allowed an Eruv in Paris. And it's clear that over here in Prague, where the Neu Debut was, obviously they did have an Eruv. Or else... It was dead in the water already. You couldn't carry the thing because of the problem of carrying. But, you know, the problem also, by the way, if it's usher to do it on Shabbat, it's also do, do it the 14 days of Yom Tov that we have, like the two days of Shavuot, the two, 
right, whatever, not for, I don't know how many days of Yom Tov we have outside of Israel, but there's many days. So all that would be included. And also, anyways, the, um, he vehemently fought with the whole Europe, the Night of Yehuda, and said absolutely positively, it is usher to even carry an open umbrella again. Because this is what the Allah is ultimately, Rav Avadia and all the Paiskin. Khatam Sofer Matir Shal Olam. So he says that with all my power I protested. And the Noida Biyu is not the case of the Mr. Sisharim because he was the chief rabbi and they did listen to him, right? So he says, with all my power I protested. And whoever came to Shul, I privately told him don't, and I said it publicly in Shul. And I said, what? You guys, according to the riff, are doing something that is what? Isur Skila. You're going to get stoned to death. And he says, Baruch Hashem, everybody started, most of the, 99% of the people started listening to me. And he says, Rav Ovadia says, I, in the Shulchan Aruch chapter, Shin Tet Vav, we have a Kisa Shel Prachim, like a foldable chair. So when you open the foldable, that, you're allowed to open a foldable chair. I, but under it becomes like a, like a type of roof when you he says <laughs> you're comparing blueberries with it's apple and oranges or more precisely blueberries with watermelons a different galaxy here you want shelter under the umbrella there nobody who cares what's under the the, the what's, what's underneath it so don't even open that can of worms now one has to know I was just in Jerusalem and my second son-in-law did observe somebody from Hasidic carrying a umbrella. And that's because the Khatam Sofer Humatiretse. He wants to argue, and I'll read it verbatim, that um, in his specific area of Europe they had a minhag to be lenient because he says it's only temporary, and since it's not gonna be up for eight days, right? Um, again, you see clearly they had an Eruv in all these cities, right? And um, he says, even though the Yerushalmi holds temporary binyan, we had this in our last week, Lego Shir, is Asur Minataira, right? And perhaps the Rif Paskins like that, Yerushalmi, the, like we said in last year, that's a, the, the Khatam Sofer says it's a Machlek is Bavli in Yerushalmi. But we also have to know that in Judaism, majority rules. Or Sameach already says that even the Bavli holds temporary binyan is Asur from Torah. And already people start bashing against this uh, leniency of the Khatam Sofer, as great as he was, that um, he says, what do you mean? It's a temporary, right? Ohel, and temporary Ohel is still Asr on Shabbat, right? Permanent Ohel is eight days, but temporary Ohel is even less than eight days. So, right, in order to, so according to the Mishnah Bura, in order to, the parameter... And the litmus test to be over Isidar is if you keep it open for eight days. But at least it's Asr Midra Bonan. And many other Acharonim argue. Maran Hachida says that he found in the name of Rapin Anav that if you. Again, everybody's. That if you open it uh, before Shabbat, it seems that the Chida, even though, you know, even the Maran Hachida was, was, was lenient. And he very clearly states that this is only on condition that there's an Eruv. And um, the same thing would apply on um, Yom Tov. Based on the uh, pin, I don't know who this rabbi is. We had very great tzaddikim that are unfortunately through the annals of history are not known. One of them was Ram Pichas Anav that he, the Chida held him in esteem. Um, you know, there's parenthetically, Rav Avadi brings another problem. Who says the Eruv is up to par according to the Shulchan Aruch? The Shulchan Aruch has a very strict criterion, right? A lot of these Eruvs are only good according to the Ashkenazim. So that's another problem. But be that as it may, Rav Avadi brings a whole list of Acharonim that reject this um, leniency of the Chida and the Khatam Sofer. And amongst them is the Mamar Mordechai. And basically, the Mishnah Bura, the Benishchai, the Chazonish, the uh, Ravozner, 
and basically every other every other posik under the sun. So you don't again, and I want to say something here very importantly. If we don't, if you don't want to go with the flow of Klal Yisrael, the minhag of Klal Yisrael clearly is that we do not carry umbrellas. Baruch Hashem in Lakewood they created the Shana coat. It covers your black hat. You could wear a poncho. You could do a lot of good things. But one of those things, and and again, I want to repeat, since all the Acharonim argue, and, and another great Tzfarik Acharon, a lot of people don't know, it was a Goyin Adir, was the Petach Devir. He argues on it. It's clearly the Minhag. The custom here is king, right? Min, minhag Klal Yisrael is Torah, right? So the Minhag is like the Neidah Yehuda, because even if you want to... Maybe, Shani, let's be honest, my dear audience. Are you going to tell me people are not going to give you Maris Ayin? That for sure is going to happen. So, Rav Avadi, I'll read it. Asur liftoach metriyav al-anosah Allah b'shabbat l'agam b'gashim. It's absolutely, and then, by the way, a lot of people, sometimes it gets excruciating. It doesn't make no difference why you're wearing it, even if you want to. Don't want to get bothered by tr- tremendous sunlight. Also, some people are very sensitive to the sun. Doesn't make a difference vis-a-vis. Anytime you want to open up an umbrella to shield you from um, the elements of rain, it's also, even if you open it before Shabbat, even, even, even if there's an Eruv, and you're, you're mamish desecrating Shabbat, if there's no Eruv, Rabbi Vadya says, then it's a million percent asur because just like you're not allowed to carry you, uh, um, what's a good example of carrying you're not allowed to carry your backpack your suitcase right you're not allowed to carry a right that the the the, the khatam sofa are not talking about but and um, this is as such as the minha and it says those people that are teach right unfortunately a lot of the masses are uneducated. So um, I just wanted to finish the shir because somebody asked me this. Um, and Baruch Hashem, there should be many healthy and ha- happy children in Kali. So all about, what about the issue of opening and closing the baby carriage? Because again, that's also kind of like you're creating a tent over the baby. And then, you know, whatever you're not allowed to construct on Shabbat, you're allowed, not allowed to destruct. So if you want the baby to get fresh air, because the sun is not shining anymore, perhaps you're destroying, right? Because, uh, again, let's reiterate, you're not either allowed to build a tent, pitch a tent, or take down a tent. Because if you take down the tent, it's the Isra of what? Because all this is a subcategory under the Av Malacha of what? Construction. So the same way you're not allowed to construct on Shabbat, you're not allowed to destroy. Bottom line... The um, there's a machlokus regarding this. The um, Chazonish holds that since this is different than umbrella, since you're constantly opening, closing it, opening, closing it, the roof of the baby stroller, it's it's not like an umbrella. It's the Chacham Ben Sion says it's absolutely usher. To open or close it on Shabbat, because he holds it's like an umbrella. So, the great uh, Sephardic Rosh Hashiva is Machmir, but um, I saw in many English books, the Rabbi Moshe Feinstein and Rosh Hashanah Zalman all hold like Rabbi Vadia. The Minhag of the world seems to be like Rabbi Vadia, and that is as long as the baby stroller, you don't completely close it or open it. You leave at least one tefach, right? Which means, because remember that, remember in the beginning of this year, I explained that the one tefach is Torah law. So if the, the baby stroller is always at least, this is around three and a half inches, it's a perfect, perfect piece. As long as if the baby stroller, when you, when you, okay, when it's open, it's obviously open. When you close it, you at least leave it, you don't crumple it totally up. You at least leave that much up, then it's no problem of opening it or either closing it. You just have to remember that on Shabbat, before Shabbat, you should, Engage it and open it at least that much. Hashem should be our shield. Hashem should help us to keep Shabbat. These laws are literally cardinal. Everybody should be learning these. Um, and, you know, it's nice to give a drasha here and there. And we love Mach Shabbat. We love everything. But 
Shabbat is a cardinal Isser Skila, and everybody should be having at least on a weekly basis half an hour hour, hour shir on these very very monumental and important halachat that will bring Shabbat and bring protection to Klal Yisrael Amen.